Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is the start of a new season, which means it's time to build the fall capsule wardrobe. This is my absolute all-time favorite season to get dressed. The weather is cool enough for layering, you're not gonna be sweating into oblivion, and it's not quite cold enough where all of your cute outfits are just hidden under a parka. And before we get into it, I am so excited to share with you that this video is sponsored by Farfetch. You guys, I freaked out when Farfetch reached out to work with me. I was like, are you sure you have the right person? Because they're just such a cool partner. If you haven't heard of them, Farfetch is a global platform for luxury fashion where they carry and source from over 1400 brands, boutiques, and partners around the world. When you shop at Farfetch, your item comes from a boutique that they partner with where they carry a lot of really cool small niche designers to some of the biggest and most recognizable brands. And when they reached out to me, I was particularly drawn to their Positively Farfetch program where they've partnered with different boutiques so you can shop amazing vintage and pre-owned items all in one place. And it's just super easy to find exactly what you're looking for because you can filter by size, by brand, by price, and even condition. I found this amazing Jean-Paul Gaultier blazer from the 1990s in their pre-owned section. And it is just like, so cool, sculptural, timeless. I love this button detailing on the side. I was so thrilled when I found this blazer and the fact that it's vintage and pre-loved checks all the boxes for me. I also chose this amazing dress from Acne Studios. Yes, a dress. This totem tank top for a more feminine touch to my outfits and this ridiculously cool sweater. And I'll be sure to give you a closer look at these pieces throughout the video when I style them. So thank you so much to Farfetch for partnering with me in today's video. I am still in shock. <laughs> if you wanna check them out a little bit more, I'll leave everything linked down in the description below. Make sure you check out their pre-owned section. It is so good. Thank you so, so much Farfetch and let's get into the capsule. So before I get into the actual pieces, I just quickly wanna break down exactly how I approach building my own capsule. I have a video going a little bit more in depth into it that I posted last week. It is my summer to fall wardrobe reset video. So I will make sure to leave that link down below. But the way I like to approach it is almost as if you were to form a hierarchy or a pyramid of clothing. I like to break it down into three sections. My fundamentals, my seasonal items, and my trends and outliers. So if you think about a pyramid, the largest portion is the bottom, that's your foundation. And so in that wardrobe, that really consists of my year round foundational pieces that I wear all the time. They're essentially my tried and trues. They're part of my style uniform and they're the pieces that I reach for no matter what time of year it is. For me, it's gonna be things like jeans, t-shirts, blazers, and sneakers. But for you and the beauty of a capsule wardrobe and looking at it this way is that it can really be anything. So just think about what you wear the most in your wardrobe and make sure those pieces show up in your capsule. Then we get into seasonal items, which is the second tier of the pyramid. It's definitely not as big as the foundation, but it will make up a sizable chunk of your wardrobe. These are the seasonal items where I get to play around with things like fabric, texture, weight, patterns that are more season appropriate and that I know I'm just gonna be reaching for more with that weather. Then we finally get to the tip of the pyramid, which is the smallest portion. And that's where I like to sprinkle in my trends and my more outlier kind of out there pieces. And I like to make sure I keep this the smallest part of my pyramid because I want trends to complement my style instead of taking it over. Because I think if you flip the pyramid upside down and made trends your foundation, I think it would just be a lot harder to get dressed and a lot more difficult to get a lot of use and versatility out of your wardrobe. This is why I keep this section of the pyramid very small and considered. So with all that out of the way, let's dive into the fall capsule. I saw a comment somewhere saying, I'm gonna scream if I see another capsule wardrobe with a plain white tee. And I'm just like, I get it, I understand, but there's a reason that the plain white tee is such a tried and true staple in so many wardrobes. And it's because it's so versatile, it's so easy to just throw on, you can dress it up, dress it down so easily. It's just something that's gonna work really hard for you in your closet. I did a whole video on who makes the best white t-shirt as recommended by you guys 
so I will make sure to leave that linked for you. But my favorites these days are the Arquette Heavyweight T-shirt. I like it because it's not too cropped. You can tuck it in. It has that nice collar that I'm looking for. I've already stained it, which is so sad. And I really like the sleeve on it too because it's not it's not like a cap sleeve and it's not too short. It's just a really good, easy, I'm gonna say the word, effortless t-shirt, which is why it's one of my favorites. If you want something a little more cropped, I really like the cost t-shirt and something that's a little bit more easy, everyday casual, I really like the cotton essential crew. Another fundamental of mine that shows up in every capsule wardrobe, it's a 12 mower for me, a 12 month of the year piece is a button down shirt. In the fall, I prefer a 100% cotton button down because it's just a little bit thicker, more structured, as opposed to things like linen or cotton poplin. I think they're just a little bit too light, sheer, and even wrinkly if you're talking linen. So a classic cotton shirt is just a great staple in a wardrobe for me. Both of these are from Jerf Avenue, but I've had shirts from Koss, from Everlane. I think the key is really just to find something that's made of 100% cotton, and that way you know it's gonna be breathable and it'll still have a nice weight and shape to it that'll give you maximum versatility and breathability too, because you just don't wanna be sweating in your layers, you know? Next, I wanna get into sleeveless tops and tanks. So for me, okay, so I cut my hair short and to be honest, I wear my hair back quite a lot. And my style in general leans very masculine. I love things like trousers, blazers, um, t-shirts. So I feel like with that, along with this hair, I'm, I just feel a little bit like I'm leaning too far into the masculine. So for this season, I really wanna focus on adding a few more feminine touches into my outfits just to bring that balance back for me. So I'm gonna be adding in different textures that are a little more flowy and feminine, like this silk tank top. I think it'll look great with jeans. I can wear it to work with trousers and it'll just balance things out a little better for me especially because my hair is back most of the time like this is a special occasion right now that I'm filming um, my hair is always back another piece that I decided to bring in is from Farfetch so it's a really nice elevated basic sleeveless tank but what I love about this that brings back the femininity back for me is this really nice sort of exaggerated bottom it kind of yes it's peplum you guys, peplum is back on trend right now, but I think in a much more elevated way than we used to see it back in the 2010s. So I am really into this. It's very subtle, but it still gives something that's definitely there that just gives a bit more shape. And I think it's just something that's very chic and elegant that I can easily see myself wearing that will blend in beautifully with the rest of this wardrobe. Next, we are getting into sweaters. So it is still a little bit too hot for a super chunky knit, but I do like to have a variety of sweaters in my fall wardrobe that will serve as a nice transition from fall to winter. So I like to have a mix of more lightweight cashmere sweaters, like this striped one from Reformation. I think it just is a really great layering piece. It's something you can throw over your shoulders when it's still a little bit too hot to do the full layer, but it's thin enough that once it becomes time, you can wear it underneath things like your blazers. You can wear it on its own. It's just a really great versatile piece, and I love that sort of Parisian vibe of the stripe. This is something new that I have added. It is this Isabelle Morant puff sleeve sweater. But what this sweater really does is two things for me. One is that it gives a ton of really awesome depth and texture. It is black, but the fact that it's mohair, kind of nubby, kind of fuzzy, just gives it that little bit of depth. So if you're wearing like an all black everything outfit, it's not gonna be flat. There's gonna be dimension to it. It's gonna be a bit more interesting. And that's one of my favorite tips when it comes to more monochromatic muted dressing. If you add texture, it's gonna take that outfit from feeling really flat and boring to dimensional, interesting, and just a little more elevated. But the other thing this has done for me is, again, bring back that femininity. I am not a girly girl when it comes to my style. It took me like years to even start to consider wearing things like skirts and dresses. So this puff sleeve is a bit of a departure for me. It's a bit, it's a bit out there, but again, I just think it's subtle enough because 
The sweater is black, it's very basic. It's a crew neck, very much my style. And then this little puff sleeve, I think just adds that little bit of extra interest. And I think that's a really great tip. Once you've got your basics nailed in your wardrobe, then you can start to give yourself a little bit of freedom to just play around with something different. We're really about adding the textures and the dimension to this capsule this season. All right, getting into bottoms, I'm going to be showing you a variety of different bottoms. So I hope there's something for everybody here. These are some of my foundational pieces. These are the bottom of the pyramid. They are just a pair of black pleated wide leg trousers and a pair of camel ones for a more neutral color because sometimes you just don't want to wear black all the time, right? If this is not your color, if high rise is not your style, if you feel like wide leg doesn't flatter you, just find a cut and silhouette that you think looks best on you and just rock it. It's really about finding pieces that you feel good in that you can mix and match across your wardrobe to maximize the versatility of that piece. So you always feel good in your outfits and you can rely on your clothes that way. If you've been watching my channel for a while, this one's gonna shock you, but I mean, you have seen some skirts and dresses in my capsule wardrobe lately. I wasn't able to show you this one in my wardrobe reset video because it was at the tailor because it's a bit too long. So this is a satin maxi skirt that I got from Reformation. I think this is a beautiful transitional piece. And I think it's gonna just take me further along into the fall and winter seasons than my white satin skirt will. So that's why I included it in this capsule wardrobe. To me, the fact that it's a maxi just makes it feel like a pair of trousers to me. So you can still pair it with boots, with sneakers, with my blazers, t-shirts, sweaters. I think a maxi skirt is a lot more versatile than people give it credit for. And it just looks really elegant and chic. And again, for me, it's that little bit of feminine touch that I'm looking for in a lot of my outfits this year. Continuing on with bottoms, I have three pairs of denim jeans that I'm going to be adding to this capsule. I have a lot more pairs of jeans than that, but if you're just looking for the basic of basic, I really think you only need three pairs in your wardrobe to give you the maximum amount of outfits and versatility. So the first is just a pair of blue straight leg denim. You can go vintage, you can buy new. I can leave a bunch of different options down below. The ones that I'm showing you today are my vintage vintage Levi 501s. The key for me for maximum versatility is to make sure that there's no holes or distressing in your denim, especially around the knees. If you do go for vintage, you're gonna get a little bit of wear and tear in them, but I still think that depending on what you pair it with, it can look quite polished and nice. And a straight leg for me is just probably the most timeless silhouette. Right now, baggy jeans are a little bit more on trend. Not everybody is into that so your comments say. I personally really like them, but it's really about what you know you like the best, what flatters your body, and what feels most comfortable on you. Next is a pair of indigo or dark wash denim. So these are a pair that I recently purchased from Citizens of Humanity. They are the Alia. They are the Alia jeans. I still have the tags on them. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them yet, so let me know in the cutaways what you think. I think they're slightly too big, which is why I'm unsure about them, but these are a wide leg jean that come pre-cropped, but you don't have to wear them cropped. They can go all the way down. But well, I was drawn to them because of the wash. I don't really have a lot of jeans that are in this more refined indigo stone wash. And I think for the fall, it's just a really great wash to have on hand. These I think will look really chic with like an oversized blazer, a pair of kitten heels or ballet flats. And for me, I'm just so drawn to that color. I think it's really nice and refined. I love gray and black denim in the fall and winter. These ones are a little bit more on the gray wash. These are a vintage pair of Levi 10962s. So these are a high rise with a tapered leg and then have a little more room at the hip. So they're kind of a true mom jean, but I still think really flattering and classic. All right, getting into dresses. I saw this dress on my friend Jill from The August Diaries. I will make sure to leave all her socials linked down below. She has tremendous style. I just love everything she wears and she's just really cool and fun and funny. Um, definitely check her out, subscribe to her YouTube channel. But we went out for dinner and she was wearing this dress and I just died. I just fell in love with it and I could really see myself in a dress like this because it's just a little bit cool, it's a little bit edgy, but it's still quite 
at the same time casual and feels very easy to wear. And I kind of like the idea of the mini dress. I don't have any mini skirts at all and I like the idea of pairing a shorter skirt with a taller boot, with cowboy boots. You can layer blazers over here. I think it's like slim enough that I could throw a sweater over top and make this look more like a skirt than a dress. So to me, it's something that's quite versatile. It's still edgy slash casual enough for me to feel comfortable in it while still feeling feminine without losing myself. So thank you, Jill, for the inspiration. I cannot wait to style this dress. So that's everything for like the core wardrobe, your layering pieces, your base foundation. Now let's get into jackets and outerwear. So starting with blazers, I love a good black blazer. The main things that I look for in a blazer is that it is made of a wool or a wool blend, that it is slightly oversized, so you don't want to be completely drowning in it. If you can find something that's engineered oversized, just take your true size and it will look appropriate on you without you being swallowed whole. Although I do love me like a really big blazer sometimes, but to me there is some utility and function to getting a slightly oversized piece because of the layering that it allows you to do. So for the fall season, besides my tried and true basic black, I love to sprinkle in more autumnal seasonal colors and patterns. This is another blazer that I am super stoked to wear. This is the, what the hell is this called? I forget the name of this blazer. I think it's called the Flores blazer or it has a name. I don't remember. It's I'll leave it linked down below from Aritzia. I bought this last summer during their sale, but I do love a good brown blazer. I think it looks so nice with blues with whites, with blacks, with navies. I think it's such a versatile piece and in the fall, I think is really when it's gonna get its time to shine. This is a blazer that I was on the fence about decluttering for so many years, but I just decided that, you know what, it's nice to have a pattern blazer, especially for fall. So this is my Anina Bing checked blazer. To me, it's just that something a little bit different. It's really cool, it's refined, it's classic. It does have a little bit of color in it. It has some blue and yellow stripes. So if you're not a huge color person like me, then this is a way that you can incorporate it. But I have decided to keep this blazer because I think it's just a great piece. And I know if I got rid of it down the line, I'd be like, oh, I want a checked blazer now. So we're holding on to her. Now let's get into outerwear. I feel like I almost don't need to say it at this point, but a leather jacket is such a tried and true staple in any fall wardrobe. And this is the time to wear it. For me, I love a moto jacket. I've had this one for years now. I got it secondhand and it's just so buttery soft and it's just so cool and more versatile than you might think. Because my style, again, leans a little bit more masculine and on the edgy side, I'm really looking forward to pairing this moto with more feminine pieces like the maxi skirt, like the dress. I think it will just look really cool. If you're not a fan of the moto silhouette of a leather jacket, I love the idea of a leather blazer, a aviator style jacket or bomber style like this. This is a vintage Eddie Bauer one that I thrifted last year or two years ago. For me, it just gives a different shape and silhouette if I'm not quite feeling that uber edge of the moto. So I just think it's nice to have a different option in the capsule. And finally for outerwear, because we're not quite into the wool overcoat season yet, I think it's really a great idea to have a trench coat in your fall wardrobe. This one is from Everlane. I've had it for years now. It is slightly oversized, so again, really useful and versatile for layering. But I think a trench is just that like, cherry on top of a really great outfit. You could be wearing a leggings, sneakers, and a hoodie, and you throw on a trench, and all of a sudden you look really chic, put together, considered, and elevated. I think a camel color is obviously a classic, but you can get it in black, in green, in red, whatever color that really speaks to you, that goes with your palette, and that you would just be excited about wearing and layering over your outfits in the fall months. You can definitely check out the pre-owned section on Farfetch, or just go to your local thrift store and I guarantee you'll find something really cool and classic. Last but not least, shoes. I'm gonna start off with my favorite, my Converse Chuck Taylor sneakers. These are the high top. I've had these for years now and they have held up. And for Converse, I think they just get better the more you wear them. I love a beat up, worn in pair of chucks so much more than like a crisp, fresh pair. I think they just add a cool level of vibe and grunge to your looks. 
but I do love the idea of a more slimline sneaker as opposed to a chunkier one because a chunky sneaker, although I do love it, I think it can really weigh down an outfit and really make you feel quite bottom heavy and in some cases can really truncate you. Like I have short legs and a long torso, so I find when I do a more chunky sneaker, even though there is a time and a place for it, I tend to feel better and just more streamlined in a slimmer sneaker. Next is a pair of flats. So I love a ballet flat. I've been wearing mine for years. For me, especially with my style, again, it's just a nice way for me to tie back in some femininity into my outfits. I do think a ballet flat is a total classic, but if you're looking for something a little more modern and still feminine, I think you can consider a Mary Jane style ballet flat. For me, I am not a Mary Jane girl at all. I never really liked them until I saw these ones. And it's because these are really slim and minimal and I really love the square toe. So these to me are really mimicking a true point ballet slipper. And I find a lot of the Mary Janes that I've seen always just have like, they're just a bit more bottom heavy with thicker straps. Um, or they're just quite feminine with little heels and things like that. And I never really felt like that was my style, but I find these are a nice, mix of modernity, femininity, and still minimal and sleek. But I love these with a pair of jeans. I love them with skirts, with trousers, with dresses. I have just been wearing these everywhere. And something that has been missing from my wardrobe that I think is the perfect time to wear now is a pair of knee-high boots. So they have a lot going on and I think they are really a nice cherry on top of what will be sort of very plain, minimal outfits a lot of the time for me. So this is a nice way for me to add in some texture, some dimension into looks. I like that the heel is not too high, but I am like stoked to pair this with the maxi skirt, with the mini dress. You can wear it under jeans. They're just cool, they're hot, I like it. Um, so I just love the idea of a knee high boot. So that's everything for my fall capsule wardrobe this season. So if this was everything I had to work with, honestly, I would never get bored. If you enjoyed this video and got some value from it, please give me a thumbs up. It is one of the best ways that you can support my channel. And if you wanna see more videos like this, then please subscribe. Thank you again to Farfetch for sponsoring this video. If you were interested in any of the pieces you saw today, or if you wanna check out their pre-loved section, I will leave all the details linked down below for you. And let me know if you wanna see an outfits video because I could go on for ages with just this. Let me know, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.